And I've also got the customer's dog is literally just sat next to me, keeping an eye on me. Come on, out of the way, I need to get there. But I'm really sensitive moving that because there's no access to the system in there. The good thing in this job is as well, put timber along here and batten that along there that they've left out. A little handy hatch for the plumber. Perfect. More people should be doing things like this, I think. I'm going to try and see if we can take this bit of tile out. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So I am just being a little bit quiet doing this job because next door the little baby's asleep. So I'm trying to keep the noise down. So if my tone is a little lower, you'll know why. But let's crack on with it. Right then, we're jobbing around a little bit today. We've got a little job to do here on this bath. It's an old cast iron bath, um, heritage bath. Well, probably not that old to be fair. It's just a nice solid cast iron bath, but we've got to switch out these telephone taps. And underneath here, we've luckily got two levers and some flexes. I have mentioned the flexes to the customer, but they said, no, just switch the taps out and make it as easy as possible. So to be honest, it's coming in in 15 mil through the um, lever valves and up through some high flow flexes. So I'm not overly fussed with it, to be honest. I'll check the flexes when we take it out, but all should be good now. They're going for a fairly similar telephone tap that's inside here. So. I'll whip it out and show you exactly what we've got. So with these high-end sort of taps, this is a Bayswater London tap and they're just made so, so well. There we go, it's just a little, um, it's just a really nice tap to be fair. The throw on it is lovely, switching between shower and taps. So it was pretty much similar to that one in style, but this one, I think, from what they've said, this is knackered and it leaks out of here and here, so. They just said, Mark, just come and change the taps, get it done. So first off, we're going to switch these lever valves off, get the water out of the tap and undo the flexes. And being levers, there shouldn't be any problem turning them off. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, you can see how loose that is. So we've got both our lever taps off now. Water's out of the tap. What I'm going to do is just disconnect these flexes off the bottom of the tap remove the securing nuts off the bottom and whip this one out of the way. Then we can build this one up and offer it into place. Got a tiny little bit of water. I've just got a little rag under there. We'll pop that there, but it won't be a lot at all. There we go. And we'll just reach for it. There we go, get the cold as well. Job done. Right, let's get this tap out. So to get up to those nuts up there, we've got the Nurad Tapex kit. I've featured this so many times on videos. Great bit of kit. If you haven't got one, they're not cheap. I think now they're about 180 quid, but they're well worth having. I find it really handy to have. So we'll get, I think it'll be that one for the bath. Then we've got an extension pole. Yeah. Extender pole there and a ratchet there to get right into it. So with both the nuts off the bottom of the tap, in theory, this should, yeah, just lift out. Let's put this one out of the way. We'll clean this up here and get it ready for the new one to go in. So then we've got the Bayswater taps here. Let's offer them straight up and into place. And sit there perfectly. And then underneath, we can adjust the, the stems for it to come down, but I think they're spot on, to be honest. So let's get this secured into position and get it all tightened up. Right, we've got the tap set in place now. I've just tightened on the cold over the far end and then the hot is just tightening onto there. So we'll get it tightened up and then we can get the valves on, give it a test, and then we can begin building up the uh, cross heads and the shower hose. So we've got the cold on, let's turn the hot on. Turn the tap off, maybe. There we go. Right, all is good. 
So the taps are on working. We put the shower head on and let's just connect the hose up to here and then just tighten up. Just got to tighten that and then that will sit like so. So everything's good under there. Levers are on, it's all dry and taps running. Perfectly fine. And let's just switch it over to the shower. job done. The good thing with this job is as well, yes they've uh, put timber along here and batten that along there but they've left out a little handy hatch for the plumber so we can get to the taps. Perfect. More people should be doing things like this I think. Right I'm on a little job here, a simple job that I just started doing and I wasn't going to record it. I thought I've done this before. It's just basically changing the uh, ceramic cartridges on this kitchen tap. I've done this side already, but then I've got halfway through it and thought, do you know what? I should have, have filmed this because I can show you the, the difference between tap cartridges and how much a small little difference in the thread of where the tap head sits on makes a lot of difference. And it's a good reason to show you this tap box that I got from Plumbase ages ago um, and just how handy it is. So, just for the record, I've done this one already, I've, I've done it. So, I'm going to talk you through this, changing this side. I mean, most people will know how to change tap washers, um, but I'll, I'll just give you a little insight into this one. So, underneath here, there's a tiny, tiny little grub screw. I can get my Allen key onto it. So... We'll just whip this one off. Obviously, being on the right-hand side, it's the cold. A little bit more, and it will come off. Hopefully, that's it. Yeah, there we go. Right. So, we've got that off. Let's take the barrel out. And, and pop out. Water's off already, obviously. So, we'll whip this out. And also, I've never seen a shroud on a tap like this one either and I'll show you when I've got it out basically the cartridge sits in like an adapter plate um, yeah you see cartridge is here but it sits in this little adapter plate here so I'll get my grips onto it and we'll whip that off and I've also got the customer's dog is literally just sat next to me keeping an eye on me come on out of the way I need to get there beep beep thank you right Neurad Tap X kit always comes out of the van when you're doing anything to do with taps, just in case. Look, the dog's just going to keep an eye on me now. Yeah, so the cartridge is sitting inside this sort of shroud. So let's turn the grips around the right way to start with. And just separate that from that. Now we can put that back into the tap. Right, so, never seen one of them to be honest. Right, let's shoot over to it and I'll show you. Right then, let's pop over to it. That's the hot cartridge that we've already had out. Now, the good thing with these tap trays is they've got so many different versions. We all know sometimes they come higher, sometimes the thread's slightly different on them. Um, there's so many different configurations. Now, I'll put a link up into the top corner because I've done a video telling you what the code product is on that. I'll bang it up in the top corner, you can go and check that out, because it's very handy to have. This is the issue we've got. We can match up, this is the original cartridge at the tap. There's usually sometimes a code on it, this one hasn't got one on it. So, my initial thought, you always sort of gauge them side by side, and as you can see, that one's ever so slightly shorter. Also, the issue with that is, see how many bits of thread are on that spline? compared to that one. So if we put the tap head onto that one, it just spins. So I've matched it up to be, what's this? CC15 cartridge that is exactly the one that we need to put it in. There's a lot more splines on that. See, it's perfectly in the tap head. So yeah, matching them up is key. So we've got our new one here. They're the two old ones. We've got our new one. We'll pop it. I'll just tighten that. Seating, which I've never seen a tap like that with 
um, like a body that it sits in like that. Usually it just goes straight into the tap, but that's our replacement one. There we go. Tighten that in. Pop the body over it like so. And then the tap head is off, so it's in the vertical position. Right, it's off, so it's up in the vertical position. We'll knock that down on. Get the grub screw tightened off underneath. And then I got two new ceramic cartridges in that tap. But yeah, definitely coming really handy. Plum base got this from. As I said, the link's up in the top earlier on in the video. So get yourself one of them. They're very handy to have, just knocking around in the van. Right, I bet you thought you got away with seeing me in the van. I didn't put this intro thing at the start because I just wanted to let the video flow a little bit because I knew the upcoming bit in this video, I want to give you a little bit of a warning. If you're eating or you're having your dinner, I'm removing a toilet from a bathroom and there is some shots of an open waste pipe. I'll put it like that way. I'm sure uh, plenty of you know what might be shown on the screen, but I just wanted to let you know that the upcoming video has got a little bit of um, graphical content, shall we say, just within the saw pipe when we're taking the, the pan away. So, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, also, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that signed the online petition about trying to ban the sale of power tools at car boot sales. 99.9% .9 of people got exactly where we're going with it. 1% of people, and they dropped into the comments, they just don't understand. It's not about the guy that's selling a couple of little power tool drills that he's had in his shed for 18 years with cobwebs all over them. It's not that guy. We're not going after that guy. It's the guy that's selling a four decorators tables in a row full of DeWalt tools, Makita tools, Milwaukee tools, um, battery powered radios. They're the ones that we're targeting. Um, there's plenty of videos floating around on Instagram and TikTok where people are going to sort of confront these people and go, where are you buying these tools from, mate? Because they're clearly stolen. They're the ones that we're going out with this petition. So after this little intro, I'll do a little one minute uh, breakdown video to tell you exactly what the petition's about. But massive thank you to everyone that has signed it. It's flying now. I think it's on just over 30,000 signatures now. So we are going in the right direction with it. So thank you to everyone that signed that. As always, hit the like button on my videos, hit the subscribe button, get subscribed to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Right, I'm waffling on now. As I said, be careful if you're eating because you might see a little bit of stuff in the upcoming video. I'm gonna kick this intro off by asking you to all click the link down in the description for this. Now this is a petition that has been set up by Schweb, the gas expert. He set this up to basically try and ban the sale of power tools at car boot sales. If we can stop where these stolen tools from people's vans are being sold, it's going to help the demand, the supply and demand sort of effort for it. So with this in place, it's currently got, I think at the moment, it's got just around 20,000 signatures, which is amazing. But if we can get 100,000 signatures on this petition, it means that it will be going up in front of Parliament and something will hopefully, touch wood, be done about it. So the link is in the description. It literally takes five, three minutes to just fill it in, click the button, register with your email address, and it's done. Everybody can make a difference with this. So get on board with this. Link is in the description to click onto it. Please, please, please get onto it. We can stop that demand, then the supply is not going to be there. So please go and hit that in the description. So, jobbing around again today, we've got a little job in a bathroom for a customer of mine who's got a few rental properties. This one we've been called out to a little issue with the toilet and a little issue with the bath. We'll get onto the bath shortly. The toilet, they've come to me and said that it's leaking when it's flushed a few times. And I don't know if you can see it, but we've got water running down the bottom there. I've cleaned it all up, I've flushed it probably three or four times, then it starts to show. But once it starts to come out, you can see it right around the front here. I don't know if you can make that out, but it's uh, it's coming out a fair bit. So what we're going to do is whip the pan out. Now, as you may see, it's completely tiled in here. There's no way to get in. I'm assuming this comes off the top if we need to get down into the cistern. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do, I've took the bolts out the side. Um, we're going to cut the silicon around the back and then we're going to try and ease this pan forward. 
I'm going to say um, flush pipe, I think, on this one. Possibly. Who knows? Could be anything. So, let's get the silicon cut around the back and find the knife. There we go. We'll get the silicon cut right low level. All the way up and round. Same outside. Hopefully, it will pull out fairly straightforward, fairly easily. I don't know if you can pick that up. It might be the lights. There's a funny sort of thing that keeps coming down over the screen, but I can't do a lot about that. So let's get this pan out and see what's occurring. So I'm hoping, there we go, it's, it's gonna pull forward. Let's, um, let's get this dried up round here first. And hopefully, let me pull it forward. I'm assuming we're gonna, yeah, I can just make out the flush pipe. It sounds like there's a lot of water coming out. Got the wet vac on standby, just in case. So, yeah, it's just right. I can't really see anything down there yet. Don't know if you can make that out. Flush pipe at the top seems to be in. But, right, let's get it out. Ah. So, it could be a flexi. Be the flush part, we don't know. Let's get it out. Oh, look. So, because obviously that system's concealed in, we can't see what's going on. You have to look for a few little telltale signs. Now, if you look, I know it's a little bit disgusting, but if you look, I'm trying to put it there so we can't see too much of what's in there. If you look around that rubber seal, there's no, there's a tiny bit of water there, but I think that's where I've moved it, but the rest of it is completely bone dry. So that's sort of telling me that that hasn't really been leaking. I don't think it's been from there, to be completely honest. I personally think it's gonna be, from this flush pipe here. But I'm really sensitive moving that because there's no access to the system in there. Um, I'm gonna put a new flush pipe cone on it because I don't like the state of that one. Um, and go from there. So yeah, we'll completely dry it out, pop a new flush cone washer on there. But I personally think that's okay. So. That's the, uh, that's the way we're gonna go with it. So, I'm gonna grab some bits out of the van, and hopefully it's as straightforward as that. Now, for some reason, in this part of the video, the audio went and I had to refilm it. So, I was going round it, looking at the job, and I noticed, as you'll all know, I like to put two screws in these owl brackets in the floor, but we had a bit of a solution with that, and I'll show you later on in the video just how we sorted it. Now, we put the new flush cone on after cleaning the silicon off from around the toilet, and I just could not get it to seal. You'll see here, we got it all ready, pushed it all in, back to the wall, and obviously once it's back in, I gave it a flush a couple of times to make sure. You can usually feel it when a pan sort of pushes in and locks in, which I sort of got that feeling, but clearly, as you can see now, all the water on the bottom, it just weren't working. So it was really doing my head in. It must have been in and out about... 10 times no joking and in the in the end i was like you know what i just kind of sort of reassess it and uh and see what i can do so we got it all cleared up and as you'll see moving forward with it just what i ended up doing 
Right, I must have tried about 10 times, no joke, about 10 times to get this to seal up. Um, offering it in, putting the flush cone on, and it, for some reason it just doesn't want to seal. It's, it's beginning to do my head in a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of movement on this. So I think when it's pushing in, this is pushing down and not quite sealing. So I don't know what's going on. The only thing I can think of doing, I've marked the outside or just inside where the pan is. I'm gonna try and expose a little bit of this to see if I can get my hand up the back and just see if we can possibly swap, switch the flush, coat, uh, flush pipe out for something or, or what. But at the minute, it just is not sealing at all. So it's the only thing I think of trying. I'll put the flush cone on. You can see it when we take it out, it's, it's coming in from the top. So it's clearly this. Um, yeah. Right, let's cut some tiles out and see where we're at. I'm gonna try and see if we can just sort of break down the middle like this. And then we can take this bit of tile out without um, disturbing on this one. Ooh, that was lucky. Which is what we want, I think. So at least when the pan goes back in, it's going to cover this big hole up. But we needed this hole to uh, try and work out. What's going on? Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. I can feel the bottom of the flush pipe, so maybe, maybe we could take that out and replace it. Let's have a look. Flush pipes out. Um, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and pick up another flush pipe and see if um, see if that'll make a little bit of a difference. I think. So then, another trip to Plum Base. This is really sort of a nothing job that is turning into a bit of a pain, but. Hopefully we're getting somewhere now. So I've been over to Plum Base, picked up another flush pipe. I've just got, I've get another cone and we can cut this one down and hopefully just have a little bit more play on it. Cause I just don't think, for some reason, I just don't think it's, it's sitting in far enough. I don't know. It's just a strange one. You know, one of them jobs that you're doing everything that you usually do with it, but for some reason it's not working. So we'll cut down this flush pipe now. Um, what I would do is just make it a little bit bigger than the one that was in and then we can cut down if we need to. I have in fact bought another one just in case because the way this job's going, something's bound to go wrong. So I thought if I get two, we know we're, uh, we're halfway there. So I'm going to marry that one up to there, add a, a little bit on each side and then go from there. So we'll get it cut and offer it into place. Right, I've cut that one down, as I said, just a little bit bigger than the one that was in. So let's put fitting back on the top and then our new flush pipe cone on there right let's offer this up here and get it tightened back in and hopefully uh, 
hopefully it's gonna solve the issue. I don't know why, maybe it's just... <sighs> maybe it's just not pushing in. See, that seems, that feels so much better straight away. It just feels a lot sort more solid. So, touch wood, we might be, is that wood? Yeah, touch wood, there's a bit in here. I'm properly, properly superstitious about that. Um, okay, let's dry this out then. As I said, we can, I hope this does it. You know, when it's just a job that you just think, why is it not going right? Um, and yeah, luckily we can see around it. So let's, let's offer the pan in again for the hundredth time. That flush cone just seems to be sitting in a much better place. I hope this works. See, this is the bit that he's... Oh, yeah. That felt so much better. So much better pushing it in. All we can do is test it. Yeah, fat loads, but let me just dry the floor here a little bit. Right, so let's give it a test. Let's turn the light on. Now it's usually round here that we see the water come out. Please be all right. I think I've got it. I think I've finally fixed it. That was an absolute pain. I ended up cutting. That's the original flush pipe. That's the first one I put in. In the end, I just cut, I just cut it another inch and a half longer. Um, and it seems to be all right now. I don't know why, because that's the original one that's been in, I don't know, eight years, and it was fine until sort of the last week or so. But um, yeah, so basically probably put an inch and a half, two inches onto the, the outlet of the flush pipe, and it seems to be okay. I've flushed it five or six times now, and before the water will come out the bottom there. So hopefully, I think we've got it. I think we've finally got it sorted. Hopefully, I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave it. We've gotta just have a look at the bath tap in a minute. I'm gonna leave it, um, I'll put the screws in it. I'll put the two screws in the side to hold it in position. I won't seal it in yet. I've got some uh, BT1 uh, from CT1, that makes sense. Yeah, I've got some BT1 there to seal around the back of the pan, but I'm just going to put the screws in and keep testing it over the next half hour or so just to double, triple check and make sure that it's all right. So let's pop the screws in and then I'll show you what the issue is with the bath tap. Toilet seems to still be okay at the minute. I've flushed it a few more times, but we'll get on to the bath tap now. The customer has said that last night when they ran a bath, bearing in mind they've only moved into this property yesterday, I think. Last night when they were filling this bath up, they noticed a load of water coming down the side here. Now, I don't know if this video has gone out yet, but this has got the same problem as another video that I've filmed. I may have put it out yet, I may not have done. And it's an issue with the diverter on these sort of freestanding, funny enough, it's always on a freestanding bath. Obviously the diverter is there to switch from the tap to the shower head. Now, if I lift the shower head up, and turn the tap on. So the tap's running, but as you'll see shortly, there you go, you can see it now, I think, it's just about running. If I put it that way, so the tap's running there, the diverter valve is shut to the tap side, you can see the shower head is dripping water out. So, that's just constantly running. So if that was in there, like so, and that was running, the water's coming down there. This was, I assume, that side of the bath, which it should be. The water's coming down there, running around the back of the bath and showing itself down here. So we need to maybe check that this diverter is all right inside this tap. The top screws off like that. What I'm gonna do is whip this out here, just on a little um, fit in there and just see if there's anything obvious. So I just had that valve out. Washer seems okay in it, so 
I don't really know much what else it can be, to be honest. These diverters can be a bit of a pain, and aren't, do you know what, I'm not a fan of these taps either. You know, these open top taps. When you turn them on and they just shoot straight across the bathroom, but let's pop that in there and just see. Okay. Seems to be coming through now, hopefully. It might be it. Let's just switch it over to shower. And we'll switch it back. And a little bit. And then it stops. Okay, I think we've got it. Touch wood. Yeah, I just advise the customer on that and just say, look, keep a bit, bit of an eye on it. If anything, make sure that's pushed right in. So, yeah, we're all good. Right then, with the tap just about sorted, we can finish off now sealing this uh, toilet back in. I've flushed it, it's gotta be, um, I don't know, 15, 20 times now. You know, when you just gotta keep checking and I'll flush it one more time just to make sure. So we're all good here. Got some BT1, we're gonna put that round the outside and then seal it back in. Um, I will probably just give it another flush, just one extra flush, just to make sure. But yeah, we'll get, get the BT1 all the way around the outside, get it smoothed in, get it finished off looking nice, and then we're just about done here. What's gone from a, can you pop in and sort it out? It won't take long to, probably about three and a half, four hours I've been here now. This has been a right pain, but we'll get it finished off now and we're, and we're good. Oh, 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 oh,